I thought we were out of coverage here. So here's an example, folks. Michael's getting a call, probably from a hunter, while we're doing this, and he's busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, we're out here with a very valuable person, Michael Yarnell, who is a biologist here in Southwest Montana for our, our department, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. And he's been so kind to come and talk with us about how you should interact to get the most out of your discussions or your inquiries with a biologist. There's a way that is a more efficient use of your time and Michael and his peers of their time so that when you're doing your scouting, your e-scouting, your planning, you're going to get more benefit in what you are doing. And that will translate, hopefully, to better success out in the field. And Michael's never going to say this because he's a nice guy. But I'm here to tell you that these folks have other work to do. They're not your planning tool. They're, they're a resource, but we got to do our own work. How many phone calls do you think you, or emails you might get in a year, Michael? Oh, in a year? Gosh, I don't know, hundreds or thousands. Thousand. Yeah. There's probably some absolute basics you'd want somebody to have done and understood before they call you. For sure, yeah. No, hunters can really help themselves by uh, you know, doing some research ahead of time before they talk to the biologist and by having a really defined set of questions that they want answers to. What, what kind of homework should they have done before they email or call a biologist? Regulations, mm -hmm. that's a good one. Learn as much as you can about the terrain uh, and the land ownership patterns where you might think you want to hunt. Um, and also, there's a lot you can learn about the this, your quarry, the species, the species you're interested in hunting. So as much as you can learn about the biology of your species of interest, that'll help you and go a long ways too. Yeah, I mean, you, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks on the website has a lot of information out there. They have a whole hunt planner. Yep. They have it by species. They have historical trends of, of harvest success. If, yeah. If someone spent just three or four hours on the Fish, Wildlife and Parks website, yeah, there's, so there's a wealth of information. The hunt planner you mentioned is really good. It's a mapping tool um, it, to view different hunting opportunities, um, things like land ownership, uh, species general distribution, all that together. And then like the species hunting guides that uh, you mentioned. So by elk or by mule deer or whatever species you're interested, there's a specific hunting guide for that. Uh, as well as all the information about tags and the different permit types, which can be kind of complicated, mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's important to understand that. If people just spent a day or an hour reading the regulation, because you guys publish a deer, elk, antelope plant pamphlet, you publish a moose, goat, sheep pamphlet. If you just went to that and read, okay, elk, unit 317, Here's the dates for archery, here's the dates for rifle, here's the allowed harvest. So, yeah. But just that would get people pretty far down the road so they're not wasting their time and a biologist's time. Correct, that's true. And I, and I don't wanna give the impression that I don't wanna answer questions. I really do enjoy talking to hunters mm -hmm. um, and I really want them to be successful afield. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, it, there's a major time uh, issue in terms of answering <laughs> all of these questions. So if hunters are able to help themselves to help us help them, right. then that can really go a long way. Yeah. And as much advanced notice or time as possible is probably helpful because I've seen you and your peers manning check stations and out in the field doing other stuff during hunting season. So here, I'll use Montana for example, our rifle elk season opens usually the last Saturday of October. But you guys are doing a bunch of antelope check stations every day. I mean, you guys are spread out. So my point is, if somebody calls you two days before season, the odds are you're probably out in the field doing something. That's true. So, um, you know, we work sometimes weird hours. <laughs> uh, so, you know, early mornings, late nights, everything in between. Sometimes I'm in the field for a few days at a time. And so, uh, yeah, a little bit of notice is really helpful. Um, and also 
try to be patient because I really do try to respond to every inquiry that I get, but sometimes it takes me a few days uh, or a week or sometimes even a little longer to get through all of them. And so if you haven't heard from a biologist in a couple of days, don't worry. They're probably just in the field or busy. They'll try to get to you as soon as they can. If you haven't heard for a couple of weeks, then you might reach out again because it's possible that your email or voicemail got lost at the bottom of the stack in the high volume of requests that we receive. The more precise I can be in about the time of year I plan to hunt, the knowledge I might have already acquired of what the hunting pressure might be, what the travel restrictions might be, what the trailhead situation might be, the more I've sorted that out and I can then talk to you about really specific things like, hey, do, do you know anything about this herd of elk that occupies this general range? Do they migrate this way or do they migrate another way? Or maybe something of what's the primary food source for elk in this area? Because I'm coming from Arizona where the primary food is this grass. What is it in Montana? Is, is that too specific? Hunters can sometimes get too specific. All that's probably reasonable. Mm -hmm. so, sometimes hunters can get really, really fine to things that I can't necessarily answer. So like, should, should I hunt in Creek X or Creek Y? Yeah. Well, it depends, you know? <laughs> and uh, you know, they might both be a great place to hunt uh, on different days. Right. So sometimes if it gets too specific, I'm not able to provide an answer. But sort of the general wildlife biology or things about population status, uh, different season structures, those are the kinds of things that we can uh, really help hunters to understand. When someone calls you, are you allowed to say, hey, go see this landowner or go see that landowner? It, I think that, don't you need like their approval, don't they call you guys to say, hey, send some cow hunters or some doe hunters here? Right, well, so sometimes I can answer that question, but usually not. So if a, if a private landowner requests hunters, I'm happy to provide that information. But uh, if he or she hasn't given me permission to give out their information, I just can't provide that to the general public. Another thing, you work for a state agency most of the biologists that someone would call work for a state agency. But very often, the land we're hunting are the federal agencies of the Forest Service or the Bureau of Land Management. I bet you get a ton of calls of, can you tell me the travel management plan for this right. area? So that does happen sometimes in things like travel management. That's, I don't have authority over that. Right. You know, so the state wildlife agencies typically have the public trust responsibility and we're supposed to manage wildlife for the benefit of, of all citizens across public and private lands. On public lands, different land management agencies have uh, different responsibilities. There's a number of different federal agencies um, as well as state agencies that have the management authority for public lands. Yeah, so don't necessarily expect that you can give the answers of, is this open to motorized travel? Can a, is there a gate on the trail here? You're probably gonna say, go contact the Forest Service or go contact the Bureau of Land Management or the State Land Department. And they typically have motor vehicle use maps yep. that are free to download or free, you can pick up the paper copies and sometimes they now have uh, apps that you can download to your phone with that information. And so that'll tell you this road or trail is open to these vehicles during such and such dates. And it'll also tell you what trails aren't open to motor vehicle use. So the point of this folks is to try carve away the things that you probably have questions on and point you to the appropriate person so that you don't call the biologist like Michael where they're just gonna have to send you somewhere else anyhow. So be thinking about what a biologist's job is, what information they have available, and what they can share with you. So you're not wasting your time and you're not wasting the biologist's time. So Michael, rumor has it that pretty soon you guys are gonna have another document out there where a lot of these questions can be answered. Right, so we have a new FWP uh, frequently asked questions for Montana hunters 
a document that's taken the input from uh, everyone from biologists and wardens in the field through wildlife managers and licensing staff. And the goal is to try to take all the most frequently asked questions that biologists, wardens, front desk staff at our regional offices that they all receive and put them in one central location. And so uh, very soon that'll hopefully be available via the FWP website. Well, Michael, you've been a ton of help. I know you're a busy guy. Any like wrap up one-liner or thing we could leave the audience with? I, I mean, you're, you're smiling, you're, you're a happy guy, helpful guy. What, what's the kind of summary of this? Um, well, one thing is that I really do want to emphasize that we, we do like to help hunters. Um, I, we talked a lot about the different things that we can't answer or things that uh, you should ask someone else about. So I don't want to be off-putting. We really do like to talk to hunters. I enjoy talking to them. I really want them to be successful in the field. But it is incumbent on the hunter to do a lot of their own research too. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. When you call the biologist, be precise in what you're asking for. Have done your own research. Know what the, the information is that's already available to you in regulations, on websites, on hunt planners. Give as much lead time as you can and understand that these folks are out chasing mountain goats and antelope and fish and doing surveys and everything else. And they'll do their best to get to you, but they can't get to you immediately. Thanks for watching.